Hi there. I think I'll continue to return to things somewhat slowly. So I'm going to read a journal that I wrote. There was only one day that I journaled in the midst of feeling bad. This is from 528. Um, and it's the first journal of that day. <clears throat> and the Mayan day was three deer or hand. It's called returning to our native divinity, owning and standing in that. How to unplug from the matrix. Boy, that sounds a bit conceited. <laughs> Let's see what I wrote here or what got written through me. What higher self had to say. Being without a voice just now, this journal must be written. It has been a number of days with no journaling at all, and that's unusual. Still, with the body feeling so rotten, it was best just to nurture it. Also, it's uh, amazing how when the body is out of sorts in some way, the spiritual focus is narrowed. Interesting. The body still feels fairly rotten, <clears throat> but the spirit has been moving along, and I want to touch bases with that to find out where I am, so to speak. It amazes me how much we can lose touch with inner self if we don't journal or have some meditative practice to keep that link and flow going strong to bring conscious awareness along to keep up with spirit. I guess maybe we're all a bit bipolar this way. While I don't want to get too off into physical things, I will mention that the old cancer of this body became a concern during this time. It was lymphoma and throat lymph nodes have been swollen for quite some time. They got worse and really uncomfortable and so I wondered. <laughs> In working with Ken, he says the body is still eliminating elements of the cancer, especially from that area. So, so far so good. It's going out, not returning. I'm for that. Uh, the other thing that arose is determination to live, to stay in form. Did I have it? Well, once upon a time, and for most of this life, the answer was, not really. I wasn't interested in leaving either. I had no overt desire for that. Rather, I simply didn't care. <laughs> Actually, I kind of preferred the other side to this. I am so aware of how death is an illusion. You cannot die. Well, combined with the intense joy and beauty of the other side, there is nothing to fear in death. Thus, I was ambivalent. Back in 2000 or 2001, at the darkest hour for this body, when I almost crossed over with the cancer, I came to a real point of peace about it. I truly did not care, one way or the other, stay or leave, it didn't matter. I was ready for either. At least, that's how I consciously looked at it. Our lives are difficult here in 3D, especially for the more sensitive among us. Just the fact that war even exists here is very dark, not to mention the crimes against humanity that are rampant. This is no walk in the park. Souls get tired from facing that, from living in the midst of it, of that energy, lifetime after lifetime. If you think war and these terrible things are far away from you, you're simply wrong. We are all immersed in the energy of all of it. We are one. It cannot be helped. Any separation is a convenient illusion. <clears throat> anyway, like many of our souls have grown tired of the seemingly endless rounds of abuse down through the recent eons. 
It's been hard to take. We develop a certain soul weariness sometimes that manifests in different ways. Some commit suicide. Some or many are depressed. Many lose hope and the zest for life. And many, like I was, are angry underneath whatever face they show to the world, often not even knowing why. Like I said, that happened to me. It doesn't matter that this sort of thing is purposely fed and nurtured by the dark force. That's just another condition of the current 3D challenges we face. <clears throat> It's not the cause of anything. It's one thing to be or become aware of the current conditions down here in 3D. It's quite another to blame them for personal choices we've made. That doesn't fly, my friends. We're just fooling ourselves that way. You know, it may be that things keep getting or seeming to get worse, like they're doing, with a divine purpose. This acceleration of darkness, their coming out of the closet, so to speak, may well be meant to spur us on to wake up, to recognize the darkness for what it is, to step back from it instead of just sheepling along one more lifetime hypnotized, more loyal to the body than the soul. <clears throat> Come on, friends. We are great divine beings. I promise you that. We don't have to endure what we don't want to. And yet, and listen closely, mind cannot interpret what that means. So I'll say it again be in heart. We don't have to endure what we don't want to. Be in heart. I see more and more clearly how our troubles are eased by stepping up and above mind. Many will argue for mind's primacy, and that's fine. <clears throat> Each one may choose their view on life and all create. Thus, be aware that your view is creating your reality there. Choose it cautiously. Why not give this a fair trial before rejecting it? Don't be afraid. You truly don't need the mind. It neither defines you nor limits you unless you believe it does. Beliefs create, or rather, we create through our beliefs. It pays to know that, to become conscious, to become aware of it. Our creative energy flows out through our belief structures to create our lives. For those who remain in and loyal to mind, I have no advice for you. I support what you're doing there. I support everyone. Each one is sovereign under the Creator in my eyes. I champion your right to do and be as you choose, so long as the Golden Rule guides or informs your ways. You will think you understand the words that I offer, but you do not. You don't even hear them, no matter what you think. Thinking is the problem, the issue, you see. Yet, since you do not allow that this is so, you remain unaware. Unaware of what's possible, absent your loyalty, your actual identification with the mind. And again, you have the right to that, which with, I don't, yeah, I don't argue with that. I want you to have that right and to make your own choices. I'm just saying that maybe this is not the best blog for you. For mine, 3D Mind is incapable of entering heart. It's just that simple. But there are none so blind as those who will not see. 
So, for those in heart, I repeat the phrase in question here. We don't have to endure what we don't want to. That's quite a mouthful. Be sure not to bring mind to it. Mind will have all sorts of ideas about what that means. All of them are wrong. Better heart. Thought kicks you out. It works like that. Pretty basic, wouldn't you say? If you have any fear or discomfort here, look to being still entangled with mind. It's no problem. Just observe. As you keep watching, you can begin to see that it's not you that's afraid. It is mind. Mind wants to maintain its position of power and control in your life. That's all. It's very natural. It's also quite natural for the ascending soul to transcend this state, to separate out from mind at least enough to recognize that you have a mind, not that you are the mind. Let the mind have its fears. There's nothing, that's nothing to the real you. You are truly above that. You'll find this in heart. It's an experience, not an attitude. Check it out. We're reclaiming our divinity, friends. We've been misled on just about everything. It's at first shocking, then disgusting, revolting to discover the depth and extent of the perfidy engaged in by the dark force. Of morals and ethics, they have none save loyalty to self. Service to self is their way, and it's ugly. It's hard to face, to understand. Yet, face it we must to wake up. And that's what we're about now. It's time to get out from under the enforced hypnosis, the somnambulance we've been engaged in for so very long. We're rising above all of that now in vibration and frequency. They are finding we can no longer be held down in the old ways, and their panic sets in. They try to breed and force fear and panic on us, but it is they who are terrified, truly. Our way out doesn't lie that way. So, as we awaken, we find we are riddled with fear. The layers and levels of fear with which we've been programmed, of course, just as we milk our cattle, they feed on this fear energy. So, let's disengage from it. It's so very simple, really, just to enter heart. There is no fear at all within heart, not a trace. <clears throat> it's funny, in a way, we find we have no need to fight or take down their matrix they've used to entrap us. Instead, we just walk away. We were being used as their batteries, their energy source. Yet, we have free will. We have choice. We really can choose to just disengage from it, to step out of fear. That's the main energy of which their matrix is made. Now, no matter how brave and courageous you think yourself, let's be realistic. You have fear on board. It's woven into the very fabric of society in so many ways, both subtle and gross. You'll be uncovering them for some time as you disengage from the false reality that's been woven all about you. If you're alert and in heart, you will see them the sly insertions of fear in your world. Just to watch and observe is the best way. Often, once they are seen, they just fade away. They lose all power over you once discovered. And it's amazing. Try it out. Seeing is doing, as I like to say. 
fear is not native to any divine being, period. We know that. They had to really separate us out a lot before they could get us into this state, separate us out from our native divinity. And that's what they did. But now we are retracing our steps. We're going home, home in awareness, back into light. They can't come along, poor dears. Oh well, they really can, for they have choice too. They'll get here one day. Until then, though, it's best we go our own separate way. Their day is over. Their time of overwhelming power is spent. They're fizzling out now. Can you see it as you look around? Their fear, their terror? Sure, they still have much bravado left and will likely go down fighting to maintain their hegemony over us. Well, dears, that's their problem, not yours or mine. Let's pull back, that is all, disengage, no pity either. As we unplug from their matrix, it loses more and more of the power they, they're so very used to having. They begin to starve. Give them no energy at all. Neither fear, nor anger, nor pity, nor judgment. Not one bit. Simply withdraw. And you don't have to do this. Heart does this just fine. Just be in heart. Let nature take its course. Life itself is a self-teaching mechanism. They'll be ready one day to step into the light. Meanwhile, they receive the lessons that darkness brings their way. They too are the creator of their own lives. Love is the only true answer to life, my friends. A love so great, so magnificent, it can't be even handled in words. A love that's self-transforming. That is within each of us, there for the taking, the experiencing. Enter within. Love is the answer to everything. Let's just not be arrogant to think we know what this love is or what it would do in this or that case. No one knows that. Only love does, capital L. Both we and our lives are or can be divine. It's a choice, or rather an endless stream of choices. While we may have lost sight of our own and each other's ultimate or internal divinity, that was just part of the play of the script we're working from, and it's now in the past. Walk on, my friends. Walk up and in to divinity, your own kingdom of heart. Now, rain. <laughs>